this is, this is, this is. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the podcast, everyone. I hope you had a great weekend, and here it is. We're back at Monday. What's up? Um, I assume this came out at the right time, but you never know because I had a crazy weekend. Uh, anyway, we're heading to Indonesia, MXPX. I'll let you know what's happening right now. We have a new album out. It's called Find a Way Home. If you haven't already listened to it, please go listen. Go add it to your music library. Go watch our videos on MXPX YouTube. Subscribe to the MXPX YouTube. Like our videos. And then then come back and listen to this. All right. Uh, MXPX, a little housekeeping here. MXPX will be live in Indonesia this weekend, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We are starting it off in Bali. That's a um, fanatic festival on October 27th, 2023. That's happening this week. Um, and then in Jakarta, Indonesia, Rock Aroma Festival, the 28th of October. And then we kick, we end it all off with uh, Rockin' Celebus Festival in Makassar, Indonesia. That's the 29th. Um, and then we come home. So, and then our next show in the U.S. here is The Showbox, December 30th, MXPX and Diesel Boy. Tickets are on sale right now. They're getting very, very low, so please don't wait. Please get those tickets. We don't want bots to get them. We want you to get them. And then January 6th, our first show of 2024, Hollywood, California. We will be down south with our good friends, Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes playing the Hollywood Palladium. Tickets on sale right now. Don't wait on those. Tickets are moving. We've sold a ton of tickets, but there's still more to go, so go get them. All right. Um, and then with the Ataris, we got a bunch of shows with the Ataris in New York City, February 9th, Webster Hall, MXPX in the Ataris in New York City, and then the very next night, February 10th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Union Transfer with the Ataris as well. Tickets are on sale for those now. Um, Atlanta, Georgia, we are coming to you March 15th. That's uh, at Buckhead Theater with the Ataris, MXPX and the Ataris. I love the Buckhead Theater. We played there last time. It's awesome. And then House of Blues in Orlando, Florida, also with the Ataris, March 16th, next night, Saturday. Hit up a East Coast, Southern, Southeast weekend. It's going to be good. Um, and then we... Uh, April 5th, we will be in Denver, Colorado, MXPX, Five Iron Frenzy, three for a loop there, and the Ataris, all of us, April 5th, <laughs> I was looking for the date, April 5th at, 5th at the Ogden Theater. All right, I should be fired. Uh, or at least uh, dock my pay, maybe? I don't know. All right, and then our last show available right now is The Depot in Salt Lake City, MXPX and the Ataris. That's April 6th. Come on out, party with us. We're finally coming back to Salt Lake City. We had to cancel our last show there because, I don't know, COVID pandemic, whatever. Everybody freaked out. And uh, same thing happened in New York. I had a sold-out solo show in New York. Had to cancel and refund everybody's money. So thanks for coming and buying tickets to MXPX in New York. Promise we won't cancel this one. Uh I mean, I, I think I'm, <laughs> I don't want to. I I don't want to make promises. I guess I can't uh, keep, but uh, it won't be my decision. Let's put it that way. Um, MXPX.com for all those tickets. Um, let's get to my guest. I just wanted to let you guys know about all those shows. Uh, my guest is uh, he's been on before. I don't remember the name of the. It was in I think, I think it was like 2000, 2021, 2021, I think he was on. Anyway. He's back. Brent Watersworth, his band's called Taken Days. They have been working so hard. He's got such a good head on his shoulders. And these guys really, I wish nothing, nothing but the best for them. They have a new album coming in January, but you can hear their singles. There's a couple out right now. We talk all about it. We talk about, we really get into what it's like to be a musician, to be a creative artist, to work in any of those, those avenues today in modern times we really get into that and i think there's a lot of really great useful information not just for aspiring musicians or artists but people that want to do something with their lives period all right so check this out let's get into it with brent watersworth all right everybody brent watersworth taking days um you guys got new stuff out we'll talk all about it man but we were just talking about vegas because we're recording this before, but as this comes out, it's after MXPX plays Vegas. A bunch of bands play Vegas. We did the uh, When We Were Young Fest, and you were just talking about how you 
were just in Vegas as well. And you yes. were with Diesel Boy, one of yes. one of my favorite bands. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> talk, let's talk about that. I, I'd love to yeah. hear how, uh, how that went. We just finished a little weekender run, Taking Days did. We played Friday in uh, Las Vegas with Diesel Boy, had a blast. Um, Sprockets was a Vegas band who played also, and we had a really good time at the uh, Sand Dollar downtown. And then the next day, Diesel Boy shot over to Mesa, Arizona. We weren't on that bill, so we ended up playing over in Bullhead City, like across from Laughlin, and had a good successful show there. And then last night, we came back to Orange County, where we're from, and joined Diesel Boy again uh, in Costa Mesa at the Wayfair. So we played with Diesel Boy last night also, and that was a totally fun ripper. Right. With uh, the the green goes in fourth in line, so we had an awesome show. <laughs> so was it your first time in Vegas, playing? Uh, no, no, no. So you guys, we've, we've played there before. Yeah, cool, cool. So no, you know what's up with Brody then, Brody from Sprockets. Yes, yes, and I know you guys have a connection there. So yeah, that was our first time playing with Sprockets, and uh, yeah. but yeah, they were sick. Those guys were really cool. We had a we had a it was a good blend. I think Diesel Boy, Sprockets, and Taken Days is a nice nice package. So it's it sounded good. Yeah, he's just afraid, you know, his band came out and they recorded at our studio years and years and years and years ago. But but just since then, you know, just just hanging out with him in Vegas is always a good time. You know, we've had different <laughs> different outings. But so yeah. you, I'm sure things aren't that crazy these days. You know, it's like you kind of get out there and you want to play your shows and you want to make sure things go well. But what did you guys do in Vegas? Do you remember so, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas? I mean, it's up to you. I, I do. And you know what? <laughs> That was the first time I've ever been sober in Vegas, I think, since I was a kid. Um, I didn't drink. I'm, I haven't drank in a couple months, not like trying to be sober or anything, but just taking a little break. And mm -hmm. uh, as music festivals or touring or shows or life happens, a party, I'm just kind of cruising with that. So uh, we didn't party. Um, we just focused on the shows and tried to put on deliver the best performances that we could. But we had fun. You know, we cruised around. I would say the best Vegas story we had, which isn't that this is like dad wild, but uh, we took the payment from the show. This was my bright idea and put it all on black Yes, and lost it. So <laughs> no, no, no one wants yeah. to hear that. So pretty epic. Uh, luckily, it was the first show of the run. So that was all the all the, I, I didn't have that much money yet. So luckily, we, we made money the next couple of nights to kind of recover. And I guess the story is worth it. Right. So. <laughs> yeah i mean you should draw it out a little bit more next time but <laughs> yeah well I, I was thinking double down i'm like we're in vegas we're we're lucky you know like <laughs> yeah that was unlucky so, but are you gonna be lucky, unlucky. unlucky twice in a row who knows i mean that's that's yeah. how those palaces get built right people Yo, you, you know what my dad always told me that vegas was built on losers so he's like when you look at all the stuff remember this whole town was built on losers and i'm like it's a good point it is. So, it is. It is. <laughs> I, honestly, like, I feel like I gamble on myself all the time. I mean, that's, that's, I'm the house, baby. The house always wins, right? So it's like, no yeah. matter what, you have to do whatever it takes. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, and I feel like being in a band, if you don't realize that, you're quickly, quickly left behind because yep. it takes a lot. I mean, you guys, we talked on, on the podcast. For those that don't know, uh, Brent was on, I don't know, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, when your first album came out and I just seeing you guys f since then to now is encouraging to me, you know, a young band, a young meaning, well, you, you're younger than us, but young meaning kind of a newer band trying mm -hmm. to really go out and make records, write songs, put on shows, start regionally, move out further and further from your region. Like you're doing kind of what you need to do. And of course, mixed in with the internet stuff of the modern century or modern times we live in. But um, I, I feel like it's like, this is, I don't know, this is what kids should be doing, right? And they probably are, and I'm just not paying attention. But <laughs> but uh, I guess it's a compliment is what I'm saying. It's a compliment what you guys have done since, you know, your first album to now, you have this new album coming out. Um, We'll talk all about it, of course. Uh, yeah. But do you guys consciously set out to um, set out to do this band, you know, with a with a plan, or is it just, hey, let's start a band because it's fun? You know, uh, we I think we got into it because we'd all played throughout our life. Like I played as a kid and everything in bands and in and out. I've played in multiple bands and still do play with with other bands and stuff. 
then Taken Days basically has had a special thing from the very, very beginning. And it took a couple of years for anybody to notice that special thing. And our last record, uh, and then getting signed to Wiretap at that time, we got noticed. And it's like the, the real snowball formed and it started moving. And we like knew we had to take this very serious and work hard because we know that persistence is the number one ingredient for a successful band. And if your band happens to be good and happens to write good songs and work hard and act professional, then it's just going to be easier for that snowball to build momentum. And really every single thing that we've done, every show, every song, every post, everything we do, this thing builds and builds and builds. Like we haven't hit a plateau. It's just keeps gaining speed. So we're super motivated to keep pushing that. And we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to follow up this record, meaning that we know our fan base wasn't huge at that time. And we knew that if we disappeared off the earth, like the world continues and punk rock continues without us. But we knew that if we were going to do a second record, it absolutely has to be better. Like there's no excuse. The songs have to be better. It has to be more. We have to be more prepared, more well thought out. Uh, Cameron Webb is our producer. He did this record in the first and he mm -hmm. told us we need to follow up and this needs to be better. And there was a lot to that as far as like we spent about two years doing pre-production with him and he was brutal. I mean, it was like almost passionate tears at times and you know major highs and lows of the pre-production phase and running through different demos and here i am thinking this song's incredible and then he'll just call me and go this is not ready like i'm bored with this why did you repeat this part like if you're going to do a bridge give it purpose mm -hmm. and i'm like well what do you mean he's like i don't know you, you're the songwriter like i don't know what you need to do but i don't like that so we we tried hard actually i picked up this journal uh, I think it's out of focus, but this is the journal for the record. And basically from the very beginning for years and years that we wrote these songs starting after the last record came out, it's just notes, pages and pages of thoughts and notes and lyrics and chords. And we put a lot of effort into this album and we're super, super proud with how it came out. Yeah, I mean, that that's a little glimpse of what it takes. Like it's, it, you're not even really going in too deeply no. <laughs> into the work that it does take, but like, it's so hard to know if you're on the right path when you're a creative. And so to yeah. hear to hear people in bands, musicians, artists talk about what goes into actually making a record, what goes into finishing a project, doesn't have to be a record, it could be one song. Hey, I want to write one song, but I want it to be actually good. That's not as easy as you, you, you would think, right? Like, no. I could write one good song. It's almost... It's almost easier to write a bunch of songs than it is to write one good song. Like I can oh, write yeah. 10 crappy songs, no sure. problem. No problem. All day. Yeah, all day. All <laughs> and all what day is long. it that makes it good? It's so it's like you, I'm hearing you like Cameron Webb's great. He's a uh, I've met him. He's he's a great guy. Uh knows and I love hearing that he's so involved in mm. kind of guiding the bands that he's working with and the artists he's working mm -hmm. with cuz cuz I feel like we had that a little bit back in those days, but you know, when we when we finally worked with Steve Kravak, Steve Kravak um, recorded Life of General and then slowly going the way of the Buffalo. But those two records uh, were monumental in us kind of learning how songs kind of work and how, oh, this is just so sloppy and it's because you can't play. <laughs> <laughs> you know things like yeah. that you know yeah, yeah why does the song suck whose fault is that yeah oh, yeah it's us? <laughs> oh it's us yeah but uh i i definitely credit steve kravak for like helping us kind of like learn to play as a band and, and of course touring touring really helped too i mean mm -hmm. yeah when you play more you get outside the garage or the practice room whatever you are it really changes things you get in front of an audience yeah. and you're like i'm not so confident anymore that my song is that good like now yeah. it's yeah, it's, it's weird how that happens, you know, but yeah. Um, so more on this, more on this, uh, back and forth with Cameron, okay. your producer. Um, I, I like to hear about that because the details, yeah, the details sure. like songs. Um, do you guys talk about the direction of, I mean, obviously, it's like, okay, we want it to be better than the last album, but how do you mm -hmm. how do you go about doing that? You know, we, we discussed as a band prior, like, what did we lack on the last record? And our last record's solid. It's got some really good songs. 
it's it's very mid tempo, and a lot of the songs have a similar vibe, and we used some similar structures. So out of the gate, we knew okay, we want to do like a little bit edgier, a little bit faster in places when it's tasteful, a little bit more punk rock, if you will, but then like maintaining that pop punk emo vibe that we have. And then another thing was originally Taken Days, Corey was the main lead singer uh, of vocalist when it was a four piece. When mm-hmm. we became a trio, um, I was doing a little backups earlier. And then the last record, I started singing some leads on parts and a lot of backups and a lot of harmonies. And we really focused big time on two singers and harmonies. Well, for this one out of the gate, um, Cameron Webb basically says that we are not as serious as Alkaline Trio, but not as silly as Blink. And we need to take advantage of the trio two lead singer thing. So this record's pretty split. It's like, I'm a lead singer, Corey's the lead singer. And we have songs that we primarily sing, but it's a lot of back and forth between us. Even if it's like he just grabs this word or I do a line, sometimes it's lines back and forth. Sometimes I have verse one, he has verse one. We split a chorus. We... We did it different on every single song, so the formula is ever changing. So it's like every track has kind of its own different adventure. And we even took the time to like write out, you know, intro, verse one, pre chorus, chorus one, turn around, a re intro. No song has the same formula. All the formulas are different. So we changed even beats. If it was a similar time signature or tempo, we would try a different beat and then rearrange chunking so that it didn't sound like the other songs so the 12 songs are very thought out uh so that it, it's like a proper record and we started that from the beginning originally we, we were GoProing, so we got like the best gopro in our studio of us getting it and then we made a hidden youtube link and then we listened and we redid that about three times over the course of two months so we had like the best gopro live footage of these new songs sent that to cameron I was all ready for him to call me and tell me how amazing we are. And, oh, my, this is better than the last one. And, I mean, <laughs> he shit all over it. <laughs> he just shit all over it, you know. And that's – he's a great producer because he knows how hard he can push people. And we we love him. He's like a fourth member of the band. And he likes to push, and we like to be pushed. Because mm-hmm. for where Taken Days is in our career, we need to be better. And – the other songs we used to play in front of crowds of people engage reaction like, oh, that one's good. That one's good. No one ever got to hear these songs till we made them. So like you said, how do we know? He was our only really sounding board. Yeah. And we had, we had to trust him he, and the people he's worked with and just kind of – if he says it sucks, it sucks. He can't tell you why. But if yeah. it sucks – There's just something. You know, there's I- something. And, and then if we would write down like he didn't like this or didn't like that. And it didn't mean we would do it because he said it, but – we also made a pact early. I think this is important. Me, Corey, and Landon, the three of us uh, in the band, we decided let's put the song above ourselves. So whoever wrote the song, because mm-hmm. Corey is a primary songwriter and so am I, and then Landon composes just as much. I mean, he'll tell us if he doesn't like a word. He'll tell us if he doesn't like a guitar riff. He'll tell us if the harmony is not correct, you know, because he's listening. So everybody contributes, but we said sacrifice everything for the song. So. It's or even to the point where like, you know what, Brent, you suck at singing this part. Corey, you take it. Done deal. Let's try it. No right. one's going to get their feelings hurt. We just want to make good songs. That's the priority. I think that's important. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, re- it reminds me of, you know, talking about uh, Cameron shitting all over your your song. You're like <laughs> ready for it. Like I remember being in the studio with not only Steve Kerback, but also like like Jerry Finn on the Ever Passing Moment. Uh, oh, yeah, being right. mad in the, I'm in the vocal booth singing the song with the headphones, me, 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 whatever. Uh, <laughs> and just like, they're like, no, that's you're flat again, or you're sharp. You're going sharp. I'm like, what, how am I going sharp? I'm like, I, I don't hear that, you know? And, 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 and just being like secretly mad, like, you, motherfucker. like <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, yeah. uh, but Obviously, re- you know, and it's like that initial like mad and then you kind of realize like they're here to help you. They're here to help you. They're, they're making it better. Like this yeah. is part of the process. And that was, you know, when I was a kid. Right. So coming into it yeah. nowadays, I'm pretty I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty self uh, un- indestructible, I guess, is the word I was looking for. Mm-hmm. But but like, yeah. you could tell me my vocal is the worst thing in the world, and I probably mm-hmm. would agree. I'm like, yeah, that's that's terrible. I got to redo that for sure. Sure. Uh, but there are times where I don't don't necessarily agree. But and yeah. then you have to take a little bit longer look at why don't I agree, and and is it? Because mm-hmm. like you were saying, like the three of you guys making the song the most important thing, right? And mm-hmm. so that's where I have to go to. If I, if I don't agree, 
with something, maybe it's just taste. Tom, our guitar player from MXPX, we don't always agree at all on what a better part is. But mm -hmm. if I can change one part to make him happy, that's... I'm okay with that because I mean, there's another yeah. there's another part down the road. Like you just write another one, not yeah. being too precious about it. Sure, and and I think being willing to try anything. Whereas even if you're like, I'm pretty married to this idea, but you have an idea and he has an idea. Let's try all three. And then after we got through the the GoPro phase, we met with Cameron in person and sat there and listened to every single track, and we just took notes and notes and notes and notes. Went back and crunched it, then recorded it again, sent it to him. Then we Pro Tools our own demos. And then we all sat down and listened through that. And that was about a year later. So we spent a lot of time playing all the shows and doing the tours and doing all the yeah. stuff. And then uh, really, really dissected it. Then after that, did some live or some cell phone recordings. And then we got to like lyrics um, where we even went line by line of looking at words that like this is a common word in songs. Let's get rid of it. Or let's give this more specific detail. And, and it, <laughs> I'm, know, I'm and laughing like, for a reason. But yeah. Go ahead. Well, well, and Cameron's uh, playing like he, he, we're in the studio and he's playing sublime and like classic rock and like hip hop songs to be like, look how descriptive they are. And you know who we really dove hard into was uh, Fat Mike from No Effects. His lyrics are so good. He, he creates such solid imagery that like you could almost mute the music in the background and just read his lyrics. He tells a story. He uses like locations and names. And it's like. You weren't there, but you're creating your own story in your head, and you're like, I want to listen to the song again, even if I don't like it, just to get more details from his story. So we tried to like tell good stories with detail that were different than every other song you might be familiar with. Yeah, yeah. I really like that first song you guys have out. Um, it's called what? It, what is it called again? I can find it. My least of all you. Least of all you. I keep looking yes. at the wrong place for my notes. <laughs> Sorry. Least of all you, man. I I really dug that. I was like. Thank you. That's got, it sounds like Taken Days, but it sounds like what's next to me. It was like, mm -hmm. okay, that's yeah. like that next, just one notch up songwriting yeah. wise felt like bigger. I, I immediately noticed two different singing voices, mm -hmm. which I was going to ask you about. But we already know the mm -hmm. answer to that. It's you. Yeah. Uh, it's cool, yeah. man. It's got that like, almost like a more old school punk. And I don't mean it like in a raspy way, but like. Yeah. TSOL or like, you know, just like older style punk vocal to the beginning, you know, and then and it goes yeah. into the more melodic, I would say emo style punk, mm -hmm. which I, you know, it reminds me of bands like even MXPX and the Ataris, um, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, yes. like really heartfelt. Yeah. Whether, whether, you know, whether you intended it or not, like I felt like, okay, this feels, this feels real and it feels like, I don't know, it feels triumphant in a way. Thank I, you. I like Thank that you. sound. Thank you, man. Yeah, we're really happy. I know like our we don't have a huge like listening population, but I know it's gone up like 900 percent since I'm watching the numbers. And we've had a 900 percent increase since that one song. So and that's a good feeling, you know, like we made this music. No one heard it except our girlfriends and Cameron Webb and us. And then um, we ended up uh, we were going to go through wiretap records again. And we started talking to some other labels and then a brand new label based off of uh, Dorothy House Media it was like a media company that we had met. And we we're going to do some like maybe a website and some things with. And they ended up uh, starting a brand new record label called 55 Rose Records. And we love them. And John and everybody has done so much for us. And they made us an offer, a brand new record label. And they're like, well, we're also doing some side work with Spam in Austria, which is blowing up hard. So they got with them kind of showed them our new music where we were at. We'd just gotten masters in between Spam and, and uh, Austria and 55 Rows here in Orange County. They put together a like a package we couldn't refuse that includes Dorothy House Media for like merchandise and web and all this stuff. And really we're like on cloud nine. I mean, we feel like the luckiest people in the world. So thank you, John from 55 Rows and Stefan from uh, Spam for believing in our band. And that was very rewarding to know that no one has heard the music, but when those when they took the time to listen, they were all in on us. And we're like, that feels good. Then we put out one song and we get like a 900% increase in our listening. We're like, okay. Yeah. And I don't think that's the best song. We chose it. We're, we have four singles, but we did not choose the best song. On I don't even think – my favorite song isn't even one of the singles, to be honest. But <laughs> <Okay>. we, <laughs> we were very strategic with four singles. That was like a whole thing, too. And uh, and which ones? That's so hard to pick, right? Like, how do yeah. you pick singles? 
But we felt like that was a good shot across the board of like, this is new Taken Days, kind of. But it's a good song. It's a good first impression. Yeah. But if you're into this, like, there's a lot more coming on this record, you know, let alone our future. So that's cool. Yeah. It's Don't wild. I wonder, I wonder, you know, I'm just, I'm no expert on the music business or anything, but I just wonder if record labels and those types of companies are looking out at the landscape and looking for bands that are actually working and doing things and Mm -hmm. promoting themselves. And, and I, and I know that's something that's sort of like, yeah, duh, that's what they always look for. But, but these days it just seems like people artists have never really wanted to do all the promotion work and all that. They just want to be on stage and and be in the video or whatever. But, but, and I, and I think, I think that's what's changed is you guys kind of just realize, Hey, this is just, if this takes off, it becomes, it becomes, you know, something that's going to take up a lot of my time and it's going to be a lot of work, but it's such rewarding work. I mean, it's, it's, you get to do fun, exciting events you get to talk to new people all the time you get it mm-hmm. you get a gamble a little bit you know take the <laughs> yeah. merch money and throw it down yeah. on, yeah. on black uh who gets to do that you know like that, that's the thing is like yeah. we, we do <laughs> exactly so like yeah. I, I feel like being in a band it, it's a, it's a, a reward in and of itself and mm-hmm. when you grow older of course then the bills grow as well and and then you have to actually make money in your life but if we didn't ever have to make money, you know, like I wonder what that world would be like, you know, musically, Man. how many bands would be out there? Just, wow. yeah. just, yeah. Um, and, and there's already too many bands. Let's just face it. But, <laughs> totally, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but uh, I love to see people like such as yourselves out there working hard. Cause that's what it takes. Thank I mean, you. everybody out there that's yeah. been, that started early and is still doing it now has worked their ass off to be here. Yeah. Um, I don't care what band you say, you know, no effects, slag wagon, sure. all, all of these bands, everybody, yeah, everybody, you, you guys included and everyone. And I think, I think that the days too, of like starting a new band and putting out an EP and getting one good tour. And then the whole scene goes, Oh, we're in that doesn't happen now. It's, it's different. And I actually think that it's like a 10 year overnight success that mm-hmm. people aren't going to take your band seriously for 10 years. So like mm-hmm. no lie me, Corey and Landon have like a pact where we're like, look, uh, 2027 would be 10 years of the band. Let's evaluate it there. You know, like, let's take a look at what we accomplished in 10 years, hopefully three or four full lengths and then see like, is, is this working? Because that, that's a good testament because a band can't put out an EP now and have some record label or some festival or a major headlining band go, Hey, come on tour with us. Cause that band might not be abandoned six months and it's not worth you know, giving them that promotion. You, you want to see a band that's got a few records underneath them. They've got some mm-hmm. festivals under their belt. They've done some touring. They've been working hard. They're here to stay. And then they're worth, w- whether it's an industry person giving you a chance or whether it's a fan giving you the listen and the follow, they're like, no, I've seen, I've seen these guys. Like I had a guy walk up to me last night and uh, he goes, yeah, that's the fifth time I've seen you. And I'm like, really? That's awesome. And he kind of was throwing out some of the shows he's seen us at. I'm like, that's fantastic. He goes, no, I, I came to see you guys. Like, Diesel Boy's cool too. Like I'm stoked, but I, I wanted to catch you guys again. And we're hearing that more and more and more every show. And the people are knowing the words. And you're like, wow, you've seen us five times because I still think we're like a brand new band, you know. And I'm like, that is cool. Like, what a cool thing. Like, that's wild to us. You know, we're grateful. Yeah. I was talking to my hair lady, or she was talking to me more. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> and she, yeah. she was like, I. I was at this restaurant and there was this famous Vietnamese singer there and I didn't say anything and because I don't say anything when there's famous people, she was telling me. And, and then she was telling, talking to her friend that was, I guess used to be a singer, but doesn't do it anymore. And this guy was like, no, when you see somebody you recognize, you go up to them and you act like they're the biggest thing in the world. You go, oh, my God, because it makes them feel good. It makes their day. So it's you're making the celebrities day of going up and acting like a fangirl. So <laughs> I, I thought that was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> that is funny. I know. <laughs> I never thought of it that way, really. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. it does make yeah. us feel good when people come to five of your shows. Right absolutely yeah it's that's killer like it's great you know and they keep coming back so it's exciting that's rad yeah 
That's right. We're, we're, we're very happy with how everything's going. And, and also like, I will say, <clears throat> even though we have, um, two record labels and like a media agency that are helping us with so much stuff. It's like, we're a DIY band. So to all of a sudden have all this buy-in and all this help is pretty incredible. <clears throat> and now covert booking has rostered us and they're helping us get opportunities. And there's a, a booking agent we have in Europe that we're working with to try to get out there, <clears throat> excuse me, next summer. And that by no means is like a lean back and put your feet up experience for us. That's like a, a huddle up, like guys, this is no joke. Like this yeah. is our part-time job sit down with your families, discuss that what the buy-in is here and the effort. And even like the having no drinks in Vegas and Laughlin this weekend was just so I could conduct myself more professionally. It was for the music. We're there to melt faces playing shows. That's yeah, it. Yeah. It's the only reason we went there. I can go to, I can go gamble and party any other day that week. It's only four hours away. So, and that was our like band huddle. We're like, we're, we're having a moment. We're releasing very good music. People care about what very little they know. And so many people are helping us we need to push harder than ever. It, this is more DIY than ever now. So, and that's kind of how we're, we're looking at it. Dude. I mean, being, I, I feel like, I feel like you guys are definitely taking the right advantage of the situation because no matter what, it's going to be work and investing in yourself will pay off somehow. Like I, I always feel like that. I, I try not to worry about the money part of, being in this band, even though it's like a constant threat, right? You're like constantly under threat sure. of not being able to pay your bills or whatever, but it doesn't matter how much, how many people you play in front of, how much money you make. If you make more money, you just have more stuff to pay for. It does <laughs> not, I, I don't know how it even works because like, I, know. I look at our budgets five years ago and they're like half of what they are now. And I'm just like, how yeah. does this even happen? I, I don't know. <laughs> but going back to just, for anybody listening that maybe is thinking about the pain that it is to start new projects, to invest yourself into these projects. Like I think of it as if it's something you really care about doing, invest in it that you may never get paid. You may never get anything other than experience from it. And, and I think most jobs you should kind of think of it that way. If it's a job that you want to do, you want to get into an industry um, to work for yourself, maybe eventually, but investing those years, however many years it is, it's going to be multiple years. Like you're saying, like probably 10 years easily, Yeah, probably yeah. more than that to actually, to actually get, get paid. I'm sure that there's some easy button that somebody has, but I've never found it yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If you do let us know, cause we'll, we'll press it. Too. Absolutely. I, I'd <laughs> love to have that thing. So investing, knowing that you're not going to get paid for quite a while. And then once you hit a certain level, you will start getting paid. I mean, there, there is this weird thing in the world. It's almost like why we kind of feel like we're living in a simulation is like yeah. the way data moves, the way trends happen. And, and that happens with your life in ways, in yeah. weird ways. When you start doing something productive every day, that actually does things that you can't see in your everyday life. It has ripple effects in your life and in the world around you. I'm convinced of this. And it may be big, big ripple effects. It may be just little micro ripples. But if you're doing positive things, you're building things, you're making things, you're writing songs and putting those songs out into the world, 12 people might listen to it, millions of people might listen to it, but it's still making an effect on something in the world. And I yes. try to live my life realizing that when I'm not getting paid for... Most of the things that we do, I mean, yeah, sure, we get paid for shows and stuff, but like yeah. so many of the things we do, it's not about the money. It's about making things. It's about doing things. It's about being part of something bigger than just ourselves. And I think realizing that you're going to have an easier time in the business, uh, in any business, really. But, but um, you know, I I love meeting people that are there to – pay attention to what's going on and be part of something. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of, a lot of people you'll meet along the way that are, that are just clearly in it to, for themselves. Like, what can I get out of this? Sure. And um, those people never last very long because it's, nope. they're doing it for the wrong reasons, you know? Yeah. So those people come and go, come and go. And you see the same people that are solid year after year after year. Like I, I just saw a picture of uh, strung out and the sentence in the yeah. Brisbane airport. 
in, yeah. in Australia. And to yeah. me, I know exactly what that's like because we've done that exact same thing. Like I'm walking uh-huh. through the airport, I'll see somebody I know in, you know, wherever in Australia or something like that. But like just seeing that, it's like those guys, those guys have been doing it, you know, and, and yes. they're, they're Big on time. the level, like in, in you're, you guys are on the track, you know, you're not there yet, you, you know, yeah. you're not in Brisbane yet, but yeah keep doing what you're doing is what I'm saying. Yeah. And you will be absolutely. How could oh, you yeah. not be? How could you not? How be? could we not be? Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And like, we know that it, we know what it's going to take and we're just going to be persistent and continue to push ourselves and, and earn it, you know? And, um, it, it's hard. Like it's easy to look back on the past and know, like that those were good times, but it's really always hard to look at the now. And it's hard to know, like, are we a part of something that's exploding today or not? So like you said, we have to bet on ourselves and just believe it. And what makes me really happy about this journey so far is that I know that our band's relevant. Like from Wiretap Records is a big deal. Spam and 55 Rose is a big deal. Like it's it's never going to go away. We've like made this this mark and we're we're there and we're a part of it. And sometimes I think maybe we'll be one of those bands that in our moment wasn't that big, but like 10, 15 years from now, people go back and look at this era and go, wow, those were the good old days. Look at these bands like taking days. Oh, my, my uncle said he saw them at, with diesel boy in Costa Mesa, you know? And then, and then we're like, we have to get back together after not being active for several years to play our biggest shows ever, because now people found us. It's like, you never, but what we, what we're making will exist forever. It could be found at any time. You know, it's a part of the punk rock movement. It's a part of pop punk. And we don't know what this moment will become. We don't, we just don't know. So we have to just believe in it. Dude, well said. I love that. And, and I feel, I feel similar, man, for sure. I mean, I think that's beautiful. Cool. Taken Days, the new record. Uh, when's it coming out? It's called Any Minute. It's not any coming minute. out any minute. It's coming no. out in January. Well, any Minute is January 5th. <laughs> January 5th. Yeah. That's the full album. But um, That's the full album. But a, a bunch of the singles will be out coming out. Uh, yes. There's one that just came out, Overzealous. Overzealous will be this Wednesday, October 18th. So as you By guys the are time listening to this yeah. now, yes, it's out. So Overzealous is out. We're doing a third single, Don't Take Me Home, in November. And then a fourth single, She Wants More, which we just made a really cool music video to. Um, our friend Mario shot the video. He did, did our previous videos. And then the following month will be... Uh, the record. So yeah, four singles was kind of the thought because spam being such a huge, huge deal in Europe. Well, Europe had never really had much ears for us. They do now. Cause I'm looking at the Spotify numbers. I mean, we're just as big in Germany as anywhere now, but, um, I thought people need to be kind of like not clubbed over the head, but they need to have something thrown in their face over and over and over again before they're going to take a chance. So they yeah. see the first taken day song. They might be like, Oh, I saw that that band played this show or that show or they were with Lagwagon or they were on Fest, but I'm not going to give them a shot. Right. Then they see another single and they're like, well, I I might get a chance to listen to that. But then the third or fourth might be the time where they go, "Okay, fine. What's going on here? They play it and they go, whoa. And then they work their way back through those other singles. Whoa. And then they go listen to the first record and go, oh, my gosh. And then the new album comes out and we're one of the bands that they dig. And like that is the approach is to try to catch them in that net and just spread out this record release as much as we can, you know, because we're not a legendary legacy band that people grew up listening to. So we, we have to try to like make the net bigger is kind of how I, how I look at it. And we're not tricking anybody. And certainly like when you talked about people in it for the wrong reasons and stuff, I couldn't agree more. And I know we're not, and we're just trying to be our authentic selves no matter who we play with, like we played with a metal band on Saturday and I was nervous, but we had so much fun. And these guys literally melted my face. They're shredder metal guys. And, uh, they were super cool. They loved our set and all the metal heads that were there loved our band too. And I'm like, and the band that played before us, our friends, Pinstock from LA, they're kind of a gym class heroes, oh, yeah. hip hop thing. So yeah. So they're like, yeah. exactly. So, so hip hop, pop punk, we came in and kind of did the alkaline trio, mxpx atari's thing and then there's this full-blown face melting metal band and it was rad everybody dug it and i'm like genres of it's different now if you're being your authentic self because i'm not going to go up there and play metal because there's a bunch of dudes with long hair head banging we're going to play taken day songs and do the taken day set and they're going to like it or not and but either way we can't fake it it's not like play it faster you know get get a double kick pedal no like we're just going to do our thing and it seems to work like we went over every crowd we play in front of 
by just being ourselves. And I think that's the secret. Like, just be you. Don't try to be something you're not. I, I, once again, I think you said it right. <laughs> Dude, so before we go, how's yeah. firemanning? How's being a fireman? Fireman is cool. I'm, I'm still in the office when we talked – I think we talked in 21, like early 2021. So two and a half years mm. ago, I had been in the training admin position for a while and that is coming to about an end. So it's been four years in that position. So I'm headed back to be a captain on a ladder truck company. So early next year, I'll be back to the firehouse, which oddly makes it harder for like the last minute one-off shows and some rehearsals, but it'll be easier for touring. And we're super focused on trying to tour next year, mm. trying to get to Europe, Canada, East coast, get it kind of get it branch out because we believe in our product and our performance and our songs. And we just know that we need, just need to get there. Yeah. We just need, we need to find a way to get there with the best bands we can get there with, whether they're really good local bands or they're national headlining acts or it's a festival. It doesn't matter. We'll play a bar or we'll play a main stage of the biggest festival. We're confident, like we're going to do it. So we're just trying to reach as far as we can go. Cause we believe in ourselves. Right on. That's the plan. Dude, thanks. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for uh, Thank you. showing up and working so hard on this stuff. It really shows. Thank you, I man. appreciate that. Thank you. I think a lot Thank of Thank you for lot supporting of us. Do. Means a lot. Cool, cool. Yeah, everybody, taking days, check out the new songs. Go find them. They're playing everywhere you find your music, of course. I always say that. Uh, yep. And Brent Watersworth. Well done. Right on, Mike. All right. Thank you, man. Thanks, Brent. Appreciate it. Take care. Talk thanks. to you later. Hey, we did it. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the podcast. I want to thank my guest, Brent Watersworth. Taken Days. You heard all about it. I'm excited for them. Uh, I wish them nothing but the best. And you guys, thanks for subscribing to the podcast. Thanks for rating and reviewing the podcast. If you've done that, if you're thinking about doing that, maybe you want to call into the show, tell me something, ask a question. You can do that. The number is 360-830-6660. And of course, you guys, you know, we have a new album out. I'd love to hear what you have, uh, what you think about it. Uh, the album's called Find A Way Home. Um, if you have any thoughts, maybe tell me your favorite song, tell me uh, your favorite lyric, whatever. I'd love to hear from you. So call in. And ladies, we always need more ladies to call in because it's mostly dudes. And we love you dudes, but we need some more ladies to balance it out. It's not a prerequisite, but I'm just asking. Like, come on. Call. Call me. Let's do this. All right, you guys. Um, shout out to Bob McKnight, everyone. Send him love. If you're not already on the Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group, go over there. Send Bob McKnight love. He is my producer, engineer, editor, helps me out with this podcast thing. And he puts together the list for Music Monday. So if you want to submit to Music Monday, go to the podcast group or, yeah, the group on Facebook and submit a YouTube link right there uh, with your blurb that you want to tell me about your band or your song or whatever it is. Would love to put you on the show. All right, that's it. I'm going to be blasting off to Indonesia, and I have the next episode ready to go, and it's a good one. It's your voicemails, so tune in next week as well to hear some really, really, really fun stuff. So until then. <laughs>